Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, nerds, blurds, and absurds. You're watching Dr. Sarcophagus drive by, drive in theater. Why a drive by? Because movies this bad need to be seen on the ride. I'm your announcer, Sassafras P. Sasquatch. And here's the doctor. Welcome to the show. I hope you're all prepared to be scared, or at the very least, startled. Startled? <laughs> Not so great expectations on the quality of cinema tonight, huh, Doc? Oh, there's no shame in my game on just startling people. Why, there's nothing more rewarding than jolting somebody so bad that their entire body mass index just jumps right up their necks and rolls down their skeleton like a wave pool at Six Flags over Georgia. Down. Don't what? Don't you dare. I'm a Sasquatch. I'll claw you to... Boo. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Lord have mercy. You look like you've been eaten by the afro of a soul train dancer, circa 1975. <laughs> Whatever. During the movie, we'll find some conditioner and get you a washing set. You'll be right as rain in no time. So let's get to our movie tonight. The Playgirls and the Vampire. <laughs>
What's wrong now? The road's blockaded. Hey, what's happened? The road's blocked by a landslide. You'd better turn around and go to the hotel back there. Oh, great. They'd be delighted to see us. And where does that road lead? I wouldn't advise you to take it. You can ask anybody. No one around here would dare to go up that road. Why not? It seems to be in good condition. It's not the road that's dangerous. You'd better turn around and go on back there. Oh, what a night. This road must lead somewhere, after all, to a farm or a house or a shed of some kind. It leads to the castle of Canassi. Oh, a castle? Oh. Say, girls, did you hear that? It leads to a castle. Come on, girls. Let's not waste any time. Follow me. I doubt it very much. Why not? It's artistic. Good evening. Uh, I suppose that you are Count Canassi. I mean, the master of this establishment. I mean, we're terribly sorry to have disturbed you, but, but we were surprised by the storm and thought we might possibly... Well, perhaps you'd like refreshments before resuming your voyage. I'm sure my housekeeper will be happy to help you. As a matter of fact, we thought that you might be able to put us up in your castle. Uh, the furthest hotel is pretty near. I mean, the nearest hotel from here is pretty far. That is to say, well, in brief, it's difficult to return there. We owe them some money and... It... I am very sorry. It is not my custom to extend hospitality to strangers. You will have to find some other solution. No, you've no right to turn us away. It's not right. We've been on the road for hours in an uncomfortable bus. <laughs> Very well. Mrs. Balish, will you prepare rooms for our guests and serve them something hot? Yes, sir. I must, however, request that you respect all the, the regulations of this castle. Once you have entered your rooms, you should not leave them for any reason, no matter what sounds you may hear. And above all, do not wander about the castle before daybreak. This is a condition which I must insist on if you want to stay. And now, good night. Sleep well. Beg your pardon. I didn't mean to frighten you. What do you mean? Just what are you doing here? I wanted to see you. To see me? Doesn't it seem rather odd to be outside peeking through the window of a bedroom at this hour? You're probably right. Yes, my actions may seem odd, yet in spite of that, the fact is that the presence of guests in the castle of my family is such an unusual event that I may behave as though I were by myself and in solitude. Oh, I am sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, and I understand how you must feel. We are imposing on you, after all. No, don't say that. I, uh... It's difficult for me to explain, but if I've decided to let you all stay, it's only because of you that I did so. It was only for your sake. That's surprising. You only saw me a few minutes. Why are you staring at me like that? Please excuse me. You seem different from all the others. Don't you think that that's an excessively conventional approach for a man like you? Who are you? I'm just an ordinary girl. In any case, you may call me Vera. What brought you here? Why did you come to this castle? Where do you come from, Vera? Well, we were in a place on the other side of the hill. I don't know the name, but the road was blocked, and so... Yeah, I know, but I meant to ask about your family. Oh, my family tree begins and ends with me. My parents died when I was small, and this just myself. The story is commonplace and uninteresting. You should leave here as soon as possible, Vera, before anything happens to you. The very first thing, tomorrow morning, you should plan to leave immediately after dawn. Why? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Don't ask any more questions. I beg of you to make your departure the first thing tomorrow morning, please. And now you must really excuse me. I'll see you in the morning.
She's dead. How did it happen? She must have fallen from one of the windows of the tower. Perhaps... Perhaps in the dark she missed her footing. She was always too curious for her own good. Well, this is all we needed. As if we didn't have enough headaches. Why did she have to disobey orders and wander through the castle like that? She wasn't the most intelligent girl I ever met, but she was an awfully sweet girl. We must get away from here as quickly as we can. Let's leave here right now. This place has a curse on it. I would like to tell you of my heartfelt sorrow and ask you to believe and accept the expression of my profound sympathy for what has just occurred. First of all, if you recall, I made a point of asking you to obey our regulations and to stay in your rooms no matter what happened after dark. That unfortunate girl has paid a high price for her disobedience. I just don't understand it. What don't you understand? Nothing. Nothing at all. We must make arrangements for her burial. That's the first thing. Then we ought to investigate her death a little further. If you like, I'll go ahead and make arrangements for digging the grave. Let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Come on, Magda, put a little life into it. And you don't clump around like a mule, get a little grace. You're dead on your feet. One, two, three, four. 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 Erica, go on. This is a good moment for it. Play me a blues, will you, Frank? So, Mammy Black, how many times have I told you, you'll either refer to me as Prince Mamma Walty or Blackula, not some perverse amalgamation of the two. Blackula is no one's Mammy. Uh-huh, yes, ma'am. Now, what do you think of that lady over there? She is not unattractive, but truth told, Blackula likes his women thick. Not a morsel, not a sample, butterball thick and butterball ample. Hmm, I know that's right. There's nothing like sucking on a nice, plump neck and feeling all of the energy of that ambient body heat. You know, my daddy used to say, more than a mouthful is a waste. Ah, my brother, but less than a teaspoon don't make the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Say, how does your cape do that? I am blacker than thou, sarcophagi. But mine is a Tommy Hilfiger. Hmm. <laughs> Hill figure, please. Dr. Sarcophagus Drive-By Drive-In Theater was brought to you by Black Cola and Black Cola Energy Drinks. And brand new Black Cola Blood Sucker Punch made from 100% blood oranges. Yeah, go ahead and suck it, sucker.
now. Don't be upset. I want to go away. Of course, of course you do, but not now. For the moment, you must rest. You've been screaming and tossing all night. What did you say? You've had a very high fever. You were delirious all night long. All night long? But, but I... I don't know what you were talking about. About a monster, something like that. You must have a very vivid imagination. Strange things do happen in our lives, things which are beyond our knowledge. Even if we try, it's impossible for us to understand. Things which go beyond our limitations and which we hesitate even to speak of to others. But, Gabor... Listen to me, Vera. I would have preferred not to tell you of these horrid things, but we cannot always do as we wish. And I shall do all I can to make the truth less painful for you. But you must promise not to repeat a word of this to a soul, not to a single person. Will you give me your promise? I promise you, Gabor. I have great confidence in you, but I simply have to be told the truth. I appreciate that. When you found the body of poor Katya, it must have been a severe shock for you. I should tell you I am the one who disinterred the body. It's difficult to say this, but I'm afraid that your friend's death was not just an accident. What do you mean? You'll have to remain calm. I know you're a brave girl, Vera. Please don't make this any more difficult than it already is for me. I'll try not to, Gabor. Please go on. Vera, the human race is afflicted with many evils and vices, and certain of these have never been understood, even by the greatest scientists. Of these, some are so ghastly and horrible that the average human mind refuses to believe that they exist and rejects them as only superstitions. And it is for this reason that for years, I've been carrying on research on one of the most terrifying of these evils. Well, what is it? An affliction which has hovered over mankind for generations. An evil unlike any other. It makes monsters out of men. A diabolical force giving men an insatiable thirst for human blood. It's a malady that lends force to monsters who are immortal and who take the blood from their prey. And what about Katya? She did not fall from the tower, if that is what you thought. Somebody murdered her. But why? It was the first time she came here. She meant no harm. Perhaps she was the victim of a misunderstanding. It may be because of the coat she was wearing. She was wearing my coat. I know that. You see, I was right to ask you not to wander about the castle during the night. This is terrible. I simply don't understand. Why is it me? Vera, don't ask me to explain it all to you. It's a long story, and I've been engaged for years in a desperate struggle against obscure forces of evil. And meeting you has given me new encouragement. Your mere presence here has finally granted me the inspiration I was seeking and renewed energies, Vera. With your aid, I am sure to succeed. If you stand with me and if you will help me to, Vera. But, Gabor, what can I do? Believe in me. The strength of love is miraculous if you trust it. You must believe what I say and, above all, repeat nothing to anybody. And you must tell nobody what I've just said. It would only make things more difficult. I 
think that you're completely sincere, Gabor. I'm sure of it. I shall do as you ask me to. I just hope that I can help you and be of assistance to you. Only, don't run away from me again, as you did when you met me last night, outside in the garden. Last night? Certainly, Gabor. Don't you remember when I discovered the open grave of Katya? You mean you saw me last night? But, Gabor, I don't understand. Yeah, for the love of God, listen to me and do as I say. During the day, you are not in any danger. I swear it to you, Vera. But when night begins to fall on the towers of the castle, beware of the great danger. Do not open your door to anybody, to nobody, not even to me. I beg of you, not even if you hear my own voice. What are you trying to say? I beg you, Vera, say your prayers. Very well, Gabor. I trust you. Do you want now? Send her away. No, you will never replace her because she's mine. I have waited for her for years, do you understand? I have waited for her ever since death robbed me of her. You are mad. She is not your wife. Margarita is dead and she will never return. For I have replaced her. No, go away, do you hear me? Get out of here. You've no right to meddle in affairs which don't concern you. No one can take her from me. I shall make her immortal. I'll stop you, for I shall kill her. I've had enough. <laughs> you hidden Vera. It's none of your business. Go away. Listen to me. You think that she belongs to you and you have no right to think so. What you say is meaningless and idiotic, Gabor. You're incapable of understanding. It is she. I know her. I shall give her immortality. She belongs here with me. Go away, Gabor, if you value your life. You mustn't be foolish. You will destroy all my years of effort and research. Listen to me. I can give you the peace you have searched for for so many years. I tell you, I have found the formula I was looking for. It's only a question of days, do you understand? No, your stupid hopes do not interest me at all. Nothing which is mortal is able to interest me now. 
Our two existences have nothing in common, Gabor. You lead a life which is trivial and has no meaning for you or for others. You are ignorant of our sublime truths. But I am able to save you if you let me. Save me from what danger? From something you vulgarly believe is a serious malady. It's a magnificent achievement of the intellect and the greatest joy known to mankind. So now, go away. I've listened to you too much. Don't you dare touch her. I shall prevent you with all the strength of my being. You asked for it, Gabor. <laughs> Mrs. Balch, everything is all right now. I would like to ask you to look after Vera. Yes, of course, I shall be glad to. Drink this, it will make you feel better. Calm yourself, Vera. You mustn't be afraid. Because, you see, he's dead now. For Count Gabor was faced with a terrible moral decision. For years, he devoted all his strength to research and experimentation. And he had found a method by which he could make the curse disappear forever. But he did not have the courage to pierce the heart of a member of his family, even though he wasn't human. Because the Count would have considered it a crime to kill him. He couldn't make up his mind to do it. I feel sorry for him. To think I even suspected him. Vera. I still have a few matters to attend to here in the castle. And then I plan to sell it. Afterwards, I shall join you. Wait for me, Vera. Wait for me. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the movie. How about you, says the phrase? From what I can say from under the fur, it looked fine. <laughs> Lord, what did you use? Miss Clara done you wrong, my friend. Why, you look like that character from the Dark Crystal. Uh, what's his name? Feskeg. Yeah, that's it. Oh, fret not. Give me a minute to say bye to everybody, and we can spruce it up with some glitter and a corn silk bowl. Great. Just in time for Christmas. You know, I can never really tell if you're being sarcastic with me or not. But then, that's the whole point, isn't it? Good night, everybody. See you all again real soon. <laughs>